You've said that divine truth has specific qualities and attributes. Mm. Can you firstly list a summary of them and then can we discuss them one by one? Yes, well, let's, uh, let's do that. Let's do that. What I'll do is I'll, I've written them down for you so you can read them out. But before you read them out, I'd like to say a few things about them. Firstly, this list that we're going to read out now about the qualities and attributes of divine truth is not exhaustive. In other words, it's not the only qualities of divine truth, but we're going to list 14 different qualities that, are, that if you use them even individually, you can easily determine whether something is divine truth or not as a result of comparing them with the, each individual quality once you understand the quality and how it works. Secondly, we need to see that divine truth or God's truth has these attributes and qualities and what we mean by attributes and qualities we need to understand. If, if we think about it this way, if I had to describe my hand, we could say that it has certain attributes and qualities. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. we, we know that it's covered with skin. We know that it has a certain shape. There are five fingers. Each finger has a certain type of construction. The thumb, which is a different type of construction than the other four fingers. We, we, we can see there's nails on the end of each finger. We can see how the fingers can contract. We can see that they don't have the ability to go the opposite direction. These are all qualities and attributes of a hand. Mm -hmm. right? Now, in the same way, God's truth has a definition of all of the attributes and qualities of which we're going to list some. We're not listing them all. It's like I just did not list all of the qualities of my hand. No. Because the qualities of my hand have all sorts of other qualities, including the tendons that link to muscles in my arm and all these other things are all involved in it. We've got how it's constructed with flesh, bone and all these other aspects. But, but they are all qualities of every single person's hand. Mm -hmm. Every single person who's not deformed has a hand like that yeah. with all the same qualities. <laughs> but basically time. you're saying you're describing attributes of your hand. Each attribute isn't your hand, but it is something that's common to every hand. Exactly. Yeah. So each attribute is common to this that we're going to list about the qualities of divine truth is common to God's truth uniquely. Yep. And, and that's different to people's truth generally. And God has many truths, but every one of them has these same attributes. Exactly. Okay. So, so when we ask the truth about God's love, it's going to have all of these attributes. When we ask the truth about faith, it's going to have all these attributes. When we ask the truth about how does gravitation work, it's going to have all of these attributes. Yep. When we ask the truth about like potential things we haven't discovered yet, teleportation, levitation, uh, interstellar transportation, and so forth. It's going to have attributes that are all matching this, these lists of truths. Correct. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so the beauty of God's truth in the understanding these particular attributes or definitions, if you like, of what... So we're not actually saying what God's truth is. No. Because, because we can't say what God's truth is because God's truth is infinite and to say what it is would take me an infinite amount of time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we can say what attributes it has, what qualities it has, so that we can recognise it when we see it. And that's why it's very important to understand this list. Mm -hmm. so, so what we need to see is that these attributes and qualities are in every one of God's truths. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are more attributes and qualities that are present in every one of God's truths other than these 14. But, but once you understand these 14 basic attributes and qualities, you will have a much easier time in knowing what is God's truth and what is not just by testing anything against these particular qualities. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if you take that approach, you will find that it's quite easy to determine what might be God's truth in comparison to what is just human ideas or concepts. Now, there are many human ideas and concepts that will fit into these principles. Are they God's truth then? They will turn out to be, probably. Yeah. 
but they haven't proven to be true on a number of levels yet. So, okay. so there are many things that we can come up with as ideas that match these qualities. And ideas that match these qualities often turn out to be truth mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So perhaps if what we do is just list them and, okay. uh, and, and then we'll have another series of questions where we discuss them one by one. All right. Mm. Okay. Number one, divine truth is infinite. Number two, divine truth is of itself a thing apart and admits no variations or modifications. Number three, divine truth and love are always in perfect harmony and without truth, love cannot be complete. Number four, divine truth does not and cannot compromise even for the sake of peace. Number five, divine truth itself with all the power and knowledge that it has at its foundation, will not compel a man to accept it against his will. Divine truth honours free will. Number six, divine truth will never and can never accommodate itself to the beliefs of men. Seven, divine truth results in freedom. Eight, divine truth results in a fearless existence. Nine, divine truth does not hurt anyone or anything. Ten, divine truth does not allow the lie no matter what the price. Eleven, Living out of harmony with divine truth results in penalties or consequences. 12. Divine truth is demonstrated by actions, supported by evidence that is scientific, emotional, physical and spiritual. 13. Divine truth is felt. It is emotional. 14. Personal truth must be faced before divine truth can be found. So perhaps if what we do is, I'll just clarify the 14th point, personal truth must be faced. What I'm saying there basically is that there's this aspect of divine truth that exposes your personal condition as it really is, not as you want to believe it is. Mm -hmm. So that's the, aspect, that's the aspect of number 14. It always exposes the error within the individual. But if you, if you examine that list, you can see that it's quite a comprehensive list. And divine truth has, the, has every one of those qualities as a part of itself all the time. So if any one of these qualities are missing, then there's a high likelihood it's not completely divine truth at that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if I can give an example of that, there's, an, there's a part of divine truth that talks about honouring free will, and then there's a part that says it won't compromise. That doesn't mean you'd go to war because going to war would not honour another person's free will. Mm. So, so, so the two are harmonious. The two are going to be harmonious with each other. So the thing we need to understand with these qualities is that they are all harmonious with each other that is an indication that they are divine truth. Yeah. So all of these qualities are harmonious with each other. They are all qualities or attributes that define what truth is from God's perspective. And because we now have these qualities that we can list one at a time, which we'll go through in, the, in this next discussion we have about this subject, once we list them one at a time, the, the listeners will see that every single quality has this unique ability for or a unique way in which it exposes error and we can give some examples of that as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to with these qualities is we're going to ask two questions. Mm -hmm. The first question we're going to ask is what is the quality itself? So with regard to point number one that you raised, God's truth is infinite, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. God's truth is infinite. What does it mean? The second part that we're going to ask to, uh, to that question is, how would that look like if I felt that and believed that in my own life? What would it? What what, what effect, would day to day life? What would day to day like? life look like yep. if I actually had that belief or that understanding in my soul? So that are the two questions that we're going to ask the next time we get together on this subject. Great, yeah. great. So thanks for your time today, guys, and uh, we'll look forward to discussing this subject further with you. As I've said, we've had we will have many, many more. Uh, questions to ask about divine truth but the next couple of sessions will be primarily about discussing these 14 issues of divine truth in two different ways and so basically the next two sessions will contain 14 questions each and uh, and then we'll get on to other subjects related to divine truth after that yeah. so thanks for your time <laughs>